Howdy YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream. I get to do something today that I'm actually looking forward to, an oil change. That's kind of strange, isn't it? Let me tell you why. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. It's raining, oh my. It's not raining very much, though. look at the sky. You can tell it's just kind of passing over. Uh, the reason I get to look forward to an oil change is because this is the first oil change uh, since I've installed the uh, oil cooler and the remote filter. So other than uh, the oil drain plug down on the pan, I don't have to go underneath. Uh, my oil filter is right here now. Yeah, you can see it down there. Isn't that great? So I'm going to knock that out because we're getting ready to drive some miles and some of it is going to be towing. Uh, we're going to be going on a trip at the beginning of August and uh yeah the truck's due for an oil change you know what else it's due for i think i'm supposed to get the uh, tires rotated by now and i should get another front end alignment because it's been quite a few thousand miles uh, since i've rotated these tires of course i've talked in the past about michelins i love michelins um, these things don't even show any wear i mean i have never rotated these tires and, and they don't show any wear so yeah you guys that follow us on Facebook and Instagram, uh, I mentioned this or I shot a picture of it. You know, whenever I got rid of the batteries that used to sit there, uh, the tongue jack um, that, that is powered, it's a powered tongue jack, the reset switch and then the uh, external switch to turn the power on and cut the power off to the jack was mounted in the battery box that was out here on the tongue so I had to do some uh, wiring there and uh, put in a junction box uh, to make the switches you know weatherproof like they were before and I did that and not only that I put LEDs in place of all the normal bulbs so all these bulbs all the ones across the back too they now have LEDs in them and man are they bright so we're gonna see how well they last because they are an off-brand. Boy, this RV's filthy outside. We gotta do a lot of work on this to get it cleaned up. Now, I'm just in the process of uploading the video for the grand reveal here. And one thing that I'm sure people are gonna comment on, if you guys haven't already, uh, you know, by the time this video's up, and that is, uh, yeah, we don't have any stuff in here. <laughs> you know it's gonna look much more cluttered uh, once we get stuff in here. I mean, we've got a few things, but, uh, the other thing is, I, I noticed in the video, I didn't really show you in the cabinets. Um, Heidi, like I said, she did a really good job taking care of all of this stuff and making everything a little bit brighter. I was really happy with the uh, overall result. Now, she does have junk in here, but this is junk. This is just junk that's in here. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm like I said, it's, it's going to be nice. It's going to be different. Um, I don't know uh, what to think about this. It, it feels like a different RV, even though it's the same old RV. We are going to put shelves in here. This is where our towels are going to be. Uh, I was thinking before we did all this painting, uh, and I should have, of moving this shelf higher and just so we could retain some of these hooks for our hanging jackets. Uh, wardrobe that we may not use but Heidi brought up a good point after the fact because I said well we could always repaint this again if you want to go ahead and uh, tear this out um, and put in shelves basically from top to bottom and she said well just we'll just treat this as a shelf which obviously it is and she says and then the other shelves we can just stack it up in here as far as the wardrobe that we may have hanging in here as far as jackets and that she said let's just put it underneath the bed well, why don't why don't you put it underneath the bed? And she's right. I, I guess that's a, a good point. Again, um, I got to do all that too. Shoot, that's on my honey do list. I got to find places for all these added drawers, uh, which are going to be underneath the table, and I think one's going to be underneath the cabinet. So I got to do that too. All right, oil change is done. Boy, that was really easy. Uh, so much so that I had some extra time. So. I did this old mechanics trick. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. Uh, they're just zip ties and they're for wire separators. And some of you may not understand why wire separators may be needed or even desired. Well, the deal is, is, you know, there's a lot of energy coming from uh, that box and that coil 
and it's being pumped through all these wires down to the uh, cylinders. Well, if you increase your gap on your spark plug to get a little bit better performance with all these ignition upgrades, uh, the, the spark has a little bit harder time jumping and uh, these wires are supposed to help uh, get the flow of electricity where they need to be. So the thing is, is I don't want that energy to be transferred through wires because that'll cause a misfire. I don't want uh, whatever little bit of uh, energy that might be lost in the wire to accidentally go to the other wire or take away uh, a little bit of the uh, other cylinders oomph. Anyways, that's why I separate wires and that's why you should separate wires. Uh, so you can see here um, the old zip strips. I mean, it's just one zip strip with uh, a bunch in between to uh, keep them separated. So I think that's going to do it for today. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Next day, YouTube, and uh, I've been a little busy today. Not crazy, though. I mowed the lawn even though it's awful brown because we haven't got much for rain except that little bit yesterday. And, uh, yeah, that rain that we had, boy, there was a couple of uh, vehicles that went down the road here. Let me show you that. That's pretty cool, huh? That's those uh, guys that the owner of Mack Trailer, that's his pulling team. You see that big Prevost that he pulls with too? Crazy. All right, so I added some new struts on my uh, lift gate here or window, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I filled the water tank completely and I got music playing. Let me go shut off music. Okay, I didn't want to get copyright problems. <laughs> that happens. Uh, I've got the uh, generator on the tongue. Why? Because it's time. It's finally time. I'm going to uh, find out what uh, all this crap weighs uh, with a full water tank, the generator on there, that extra uh, bracket that I've had welded on there, two full tanks of propane. The RV is not packed, but that's actually probably, if anything, going to make the tongue weight a little bit heavier as far as percentage wise. So before we get to the measurements, let's go over some of the RV again to make sure that we've got all this down. Whenever I went through the scales with this RV, when we went to our trip on Tennessee, which I had a full water tank and of course we were loaded up with stuff, uh, the trailer weighed in at about 5,500 pounds. Now I know this thing fully loaded weighs around 6,300 pounds. At least that's what the max is, is 6,300 pounds. Empty, this is like 4,200, 4,300 pounds. I think it's like 4,280. So, we removed some stuff from the RV. What did we remove? Well, we removed the, the cabinet that was in the corner, but that hardly weighed anything. The additions that were made inside this big table, I don't think this weighs much more than the little table that we took out, though, that used to fit down inside that cubby hole. It was a fold-out thing. Uh, they're pretty close, so I'm just going to say they negate each other. As far as the uh, uh, love seat here, the love seat, we're uh, talking maybe about 80 pounds. So that 4,300 pound, you know, empty trailer, uh, we can say now is about 4,400. Uh, then we've got uh, the batteries. We've got two batteries in here. Uh, let's say they're 45 pounds each. So there's another 90 pounds. So now we're at about 4,500 pounds. Let's say 4,500 pounds with those batteries. Uh, because again, that was uh, you know the factory rating of, of an empty RV, so 4,300 pounds there, uh, and then we have uh, roughly 385 pounds of water in this water tank. So uh, being at about 4,400, let's go ahead and just say we're at about uh, 4,800 now because we do have a six-gallon water tank in the back that's got water in it too. So. Uh, basically 4,900 pounds uh, the way it's currently sitting with all this stuff. Now, the big addition, uh, 40, you know, 4,900 pounds, here we are. This is another 100 pounds added to the trailer weight. So this will put us over 5,000 pounds. And then we have the propane tanks, uh, you know, they're 20 pounds each. So just over 5,000 pounds plus that rack. So let's go ahead and calculate out the trailer the way it's sitting right now at 5,000 pounds. 
I'm assuming that's pretty accurate. So let's see what our tongue weight is when now we're at 5,000 pounds total. Now, remember, just because this is sitting out here, it does add to the tongue weight, but also you have to calculate it into the overall trailer weight because it's on the trailer. So that's why this stuff is being added too. So let's just go ahead and say 5,000 pounds is what the RV is currently as it's sitting. I'm guessing that's pretty close. So you can see we're at 800 pounds tongue weight. 800 pounds. 800. So let's do some quick math here. Okay, Google. What is 15% of 5,000 pounds? The answer is 750 pounds. So it's showing that I'm 50 pounds heavier on the tongue than 15% tongue weight. So let's go ahead and see what we're actually at. Okay, Google, what is 17% of 5,000? The answer is 850. So it's less than that. It's 16%. We're talking that our tongue weight is 16% of the weight of the trailer right now. This is what I was telling you guys. I knew that I would not be over on my tongue weight. I just knew it. So what I'm going to do is uh, strap down this generator on the RV, and I'm going to go take this thing for a drive. Um, I don't have any way really to secure the generator other than ratchet straps right now, but I want to take the uh, RV for a drive and see how it handles. Uh, this thing's been sitting way too long, plus I need to mow underneath of it. I mean, I've got grass growing under at this point, so let's take this thing out and see what it does. Hey guys, I'm in the middle of hooking this up, and I forgot I've never addressed this directly. Uh, I just talked about it. Well, let me go around the other side, I guess. I don't have my weight distribution bars on or anything right now. Not that I need it. I'm just taking it for a test drive, but I do want to get a feel for what it's like. Yeah, I, I, I still am not sure why everybody thought that my tanks were going to be an issue. You know, I mean, this is pretty damn sharp. And I still have got room that I could go even more sharp with this bend. Um... I know the camera's a little bit deceiving as far as the way that it looks, but I'm standing straight on to the uh, RV here and holding the camera at a 90 degree. And I, I, I don't know. I, I, this is going to hit before anything hits my tanks. So, yeah, I'm not. Uh, I was never concerned with the little bit that I moved them up. I mean, it's really not that much of a difference now. Uh, I just have this strapped on. There's a, uh, a ratchet strap, a brand new ratchet strap that's going around the tank and around the frame, uh, the generator mount frame. Then I got the cover on and I just have this ratchet strap to keep the cover on because I couldn't find a bungee that was good enough. <laughs> so let me let me go ahead and finish this out. I just thought I'd talk. Oh, and also, <laughs> while I'm on this subject, um, as far as something else, everything's something else, isn't it? The... Uh, tongue weight when we were measuring it I forgot I still have a bunch of gray water in here too and that tank is forward As a matter of fact let's uh let's see how much gray water I have I'm just going to drain this out right here because it doesn't really make much difference I don't think there's a lot but I know there's some I need to get the uh those bricks out of the way so I can uh, yeah do some mowing wow there's a lot more than I thought in there well I know there's at least 15 gallons well actually there's got to be more than that I know there's at least 20 gallons now that I think about it because the tank was half empty the freshwater tank when I topped it off so, yeah, I, I mean, the tongue weight's definitely not an issue, and it looks like I'm going to have to freaking re-weigh that, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I'm getting tired of weighing this stuff, tell you the truth, over and over again. All right, so I've got my uh, weight distribution bars on, and there's definitely more tongue weight because I never, ever noticed really too much of a bend in these bars. Now, it's not crazy, but there is a little bit of a bend, and... I think that's accurate. I think that 
that if I've leveled it once and took the weight off the front of the truck, even though I add more weight to the tongue, I think my adjustment should stay the same, which we'll find out. But it does look like there's a little bit more spring to the bar. I, I know you guys can't tell, but I can. So I'm going to hook up my sway thing, which I really don't need to hook it up. Not, not for this. I mean, I barely need these weight distribution bars. Um, but uh, I'm going to run them anyways for the same reason as I said earlier. It seems weird having a place to set things there. <laughs> I used to set stuff on top of the battery box. So yeah, I got to mow this. Look at this. I better mow this before I go test drive though because um, looks like there's rain coming in. So let me break out the mower again. Let me run over this real fast. Man, there was ants everywhere. No wonder we had ants in our RV. Everything I picked up, there was ants. They had nests and eggs and all that. So maybe I'll park the RV over here when I get back. here and everything feels pretty good uh, actually the the truck feels a little bit more stiff than what I can remember and that has a lot to do with those weight distribution bars being a little bit more stiff because uh, prior when I was trying to adjust the bars and playing around if I adjusted them a little bit too tight it would ride rough like it is right now so that's kind of uh, where I'm at there, but I, I don't think that it's an issue necessarily. We'll, we'll have to see. I mean, if anything, I could take a little bit of tension off those bars. But I was going to readjust all that stuff anyway because I was thinking about uh, redoing my uh, shackle mounts. Or not the shackles, but the, uh, the axle mounts and putting that more ride system on there. We will see. opposite way. Oh, I'm at home. Oh, I just left. How did you? You probably see the water in the road. Because I have the water tank full. I didn't see any. The weight distribution bars are more tight with the weight on the tongue right now. No. But, so you know, it's kind of a, a little bit more of a stiff ride. I could probably soften that up a bit, I'm sure. Anyways, yeah, I'm taking it, you know, for a little drive here. We'll see what it does. The guy bought those batteries, so that's good. Oh, that's good. Yeah, real nice guy. He's same age as me. We were sharing stories about he went to Bookdale School for a while. Anyways, I'm going to get off here so I can pay attention. Okay. Okay, love you.
well guys you can see I got a train that is looking like it's slowing down or stopping uh, the good thing is um, the RV is pulling just fine there's no sway nothing I ran it up to about 74 miles an hour um, the ride is a little bit more firm and I, again I think that has to do with the uh, weight distribution bars uh, I guess I'm gonna have to back them off I, I I know that I can take one link out. Oh, I see why. We got another train coming the other way. Ugh. I'm going to be here for a little while. But it, it's riding really well. It's um, just like it used to be. Seems like the brakes could be better. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I expect this thing to drop, you know, stop on a dime, but I know that it, it won't. Uh, my temperature's running really good, even though it's 85 or 86 degrees today. Um, I'm running right at 195. So. We're, we're good there. I think this is a success. Let's get back to the house. All right, so that was a nice little ride. A couple days have passed since that ride. It's a little bit cloudy today. Uh, we went up to Cleveland. We did a, uh, a little thing, show thing. I don't know what you want to call it. It was uh, Devotion. It's uh, a Devo fan group thing. And we was up there for a couple days. We got a hotel up there. Uh, we didn't know if we was going to get the RV done in time. So, uh, that was kind of cool. Maybe we'll show a little clip or two of that. Yeah, kind of yeah, it was kind of funny. bunch of bunch of old nerdy people, kind of like us, I guess. So we did the out of drawers. Uh, the links will be down below for this. They're very simple to install. Heidi installed uh, that one over there, uh, which is going to hold some pencils and hard drives and stuff. And she actually uh, kind of did this one too. Um, so, anyways, yeah, they're they're drawers that you see. <laughs> they're pretty simple you know you just screw them on the other side and they uh, give you uh, room for stuff so we got three of them here and we're in the process or Heidi's in the process of putting our batteries in our lights we actually used batteries finally um, they last a really long time uh, for these motion lights you can see there we've had those for quite some time I got cardboard down for the carpet because we went ahead and put in the racks uh, we got rid of the coat hook and this is going to be for our uh, um, for our towels our linens we again used to have a cabinet that sat over here you guys saw that it was that plastic cabinet and we used it for a long time but we really needed something a little bit more permanent so we lost our um, wardrobe hanging like our extra jackets and stuff. I've talked about this in the past. Uh, still, we have hanging wardrobe in both of these closets, uh, his and hers closets. And then we've got places, you know, above for clothing uh, on both sides. And I actually have a little cubby over there that I can put some stuff. Um, but we usually put our end tables there. But this will be for our linen, um, sheets, whatever whatever else we can think of and we kind of made this bottom one a little bit bigger just in case we had to put something big in there so that's actually what we're doing uh what else did we do today i don't even remember we went somewhere oh we went to lowe's to get that stuff here's the other thing look at this how efficient am i <laughs> this is all i had to cut off 
of the shelves uh, actually one no no actually this is it each shelf there was a little piece of wood in the corner and then this is all the length that I needed to cut off to make those things work that's what I call not being wasteful not like I, I'm not much for that I do recycle that's what all this junk's over here for <laughs> so we're starting to get ready for our trip um, we've got a few days here but we've got to put everything in the RV so there's going to be kind of some fast packing we're not going to be very effective with what we put in there we're just going to make sure we get what we want to take on this trip put in there with us um, I'm still holding this stuff the other thing that I've been talking about and I still don't know is this generator mount it works uh, I had the generator on here I had it strapped down um, I did lock it up overnight just to see what happened it rained really hard and that cover does protect it pretty well but I still think that there's a chance it, it could get wet to some extent but again it did work uh, so all I have to do is if we went in somewhere uh, for the night all I have to do is take the cover off I'm not going to route the exhaust right now I'm just leaving the the exhaust you know blowing out the, the way it always has been but um, we can take the cover off we can fire up the generator we can run it uh, on the propane or maybe some gas that's already in it because I still think there's gas in there and then whenever we're done we just have to kind of plan it out since I don't have a way to store it any other way um, right now it wait till it cools off to a pretty great extent and then put the cover back on it and uh, ratchet strap the cover or bungee cord the cover so what I'm thinking about doing is uh, removing this back angle iron here leaving this uh, now actually just removing all the angle iron and then putting uh, a new piece that's slightly longer barely longer uh, on the front here and running two pieces straight back then off of it and then mounting another piece of angle off of those again we'll see that project in the future I'm sure but we've got to work on my son's van here whenever uh, we get back so there's very limited stuff I can do on the travel trailer we're gonna to have to get back into this van because he needs to get that together so you looking forward to the trip honey yep. just the yep yeah that we're starting to get the the RV a little bit junked up it was kind of nice we guys we showed you that what the RV looked like <laughs> <laughs> without any stuff in it wasn't that nice I'd... <laughs> yeah, now we're it up. yeah now we're junking it up we're putting all our crap in here um, hopefully to keep it still relatively neat but uh, don't, count on it. don't count on it right 